Amen. If you have a Bible with you, take it and turn to Matthew chapter 1. We're just going to be looking at a couple of verses tonight before we partake in the Lord's Supper. Specifically, verses 21 through 23. And can you imagine um, being a Jewish believer, having the promises like we read in Isaiah chapter 9, um, but having those promises before Christ was born? And holding on to those promises and, and longing for the Messiah to come and to make things right. Just that anticipation, that, that hope deferred where you're just, you're just longing for this Messiah to come. And then piercing through the darkness would be these beautiful words of Matthew 1, 21 through 23. Which says, she will bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. God, we come to your word now. Wanting to hear from you. God, wanting you to speak to us so clearly. And for you to be glorified in this room. God, remind us of the beauty of who Jesus is and what he came to do. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So this angel predicts to Joseph what's about to happen. And through this prediction, in these three verses we just read, there are two names of this baby boy to be born. And I want us to study those two names very briefly tonight because they are absolutely loaded with meaning. Did you see the two names in the text? As we read it, the first one is Jesus, and the second one is Emmanuel. And we we just sang those names so beautifully. Um, Thank you, Kyle and the team. So this first name is Jesus, and this name Jesus means Yahweh saves or God saves. And Jesus' name here given to him, given to this baby boy, clearly articulates the reason why Jesus came into the world. This is not a normal birth where a baby is born, um, but instead this baby is spoke of as coming into the world, as being sent into the world, as coming for a specific purpose to accomplish. And what this baby was born to do, as you see in verse 21, it says, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, which means God saves. Why? For he will save his people from their sins. Jesus was born to bring about God's salvation. And this word salvation means to be delivered from grave danger. Think about in the Grinch where all the presents are gone. Christmas morning, Christmas is ruined. But then all of a sudden, uh, I forget the plot line exactly, the Grinch's heart grows bigger, three sizes bigger. He brings the... Um, the presents back down from Grumpus or whatever, Mount Grumpus, and de- delivers the presents, and Christmas is saved. The, the Whoville was delivered from grave danger. Okay, that's what salvation means. But in such a much more profound way, our salvation is from what? It says, for he will save his people from their sins. To sin means to break God's law in thought, word, or deed. And the Bible clearly states in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So to sin is to break God's law, and the Bible says we've all broken God's law. And the, the wages of sin, Romans 6, 23, is death. And so we all have broken God's law. We all are sinners before a holy God. We all deserve death, and not only death, but an eternity in hell. And as we talked about this morning, that is your biggest problem tonight. That is the biggest problem that needs to be solved. You are a guilty sinner before a holy God. But, but the name Jesus, Jesus, which means God save, was born, came to this earth, was sent, was born of a virgin, to save his people from their sins. And he does this by being born of that virgin that we're celebrating at Christmas, by living the life that we were supposed to live, and then dying the death that we were supposed to die, then resurrecting back to life three days later. 
every other historical birth that we celebrate, that person is dead. George Washington is dead. Martin Luther King Jr. is dead. But this man, Jesus Christ, is alive today. The one that we're celebrating his historical birth 2,000 years ago, he's alive. After he died for our sins on the cross, he was raised back. He's alive today and able to save us. That's what his name is. It means God saves. And so tonight, if you will repent of your sin and personally trust in Jesus, he will this very night completely save you, completely forgive you of all sins, past, present, and future. And that is your biggest need this Christmas. That's the best gift that you could ever receive because so desperately we all need to be saved from our sins. For the Christians in this room um, who are born again, do you you realize this Christmas that all your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future? Is that not just the most amazing news that you could ever possibly hear? This name, Jesus, Jesus, God saves. He's done it. On the cross, he declared it is finished. He was born to this earth to accomplish a mission. And through his perfect life and death on the cross and resurrection, he has perfectly done what he set out to do. Jesus saves. This next name in the text is Emmanuel. This name comes from a prophecy given about Jesus in Isaiah chapter 7. I encourage you to go read it sometime, but Matthew quotes it in verse 23, where before that he says in verse 22, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Then he quotes Isaiah 7 in verse 23, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And then Matthew immediately gives us the meaning of the name in verse 23, uh, at the end of verse 23, and says, which means God with us. I want to encourage you to marvel at this beautiful truth that on Christmas morning, God became a baby. We've heard some babies tonight. One of my own. Is that not an amazing thing to consider? That's, I, know it, I know it's wild, as we talked about this morning, I know it's hard to believe, but that's what we believe as Christians, that the creator of the universe became a baby. That God came to dwell with us, that, that God himself, the creator, the son of God, the second person in the Trinity, came down to be with us. He condescended from heaven to earth to, to live with us and to walk with us and to, and to suffer like us and to go through what we go through. All the stuff that, that you have gone through this week and all the hardships of existence on this planet and having a human body, Jesus has done it. Charles Spurgeon said, infinite and an infant. Eternal and yet born of a woman. Supporting a universe and yet needing to be carried in a mother's arms. And listen, this is not just a historical fact for us to treasure. This is not like the birth of George Washington or Martin Luther King Jr. or anything like that. No, this has incredible implications for our lives now and our futures to come. Since God dwelt among us to save us, we will get to dwell with Him. Since God came to live with us, we through faith, get to live with God forever. And with that said, I think this shows us one of the most beautiful aspects of the Advent season. Now, I grew up Southern Baptist, so I didn't hear the word Advent until about 2019 or something like that. What, what Advent means is it just means coming or arrival. And this shows us Think about this. So we're, today we're celebrating the, the first advent of Christ. Remember at the beginning when we talked about that Jewish believer before Jesus was born, longing for the Messiah to come and make things right, and then eventually that first advent came. But if you, if you step back and, and kind of zoom out and think about it, we're really not that in a much different spot, are we? Aren't we also awaiting the Messiah's advent? 
Aren't we also longing with anticipation based upon the promises of God that the Messiah will come and make all things right? Aren't we also looking for not the first advent of the Messiah, but the second? His second coming where Jesus is going to return to this earth again to make all things right, to finally and fully save us from our sins in this broken world, to be with us forever. That's, that, that's, that's part of the advent that we're talking about here is not just looking back towards the first one as we do and we need to, but also looking forward to the second, that Jesus Christ is coming again, that we have a Savior that's going to set this planet, this universe right and we get to be with him forever because his name is Emmanuel. Because of this beautiful gift of Christmas, because Jesus Christ came down to dwell with us, God among us, Revelation 21, 1 through 5 is our future. I want to read this to you. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. That's Emmanuel. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And also he said, Write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. Don't you long for that? This Christmas Eve, you know, as we long for Christmas Day, please take time to dwell and meditate on the first advent. But then let that drive your heart to anticipate and long for and hope for the second advent where Jesus will bring Revelation 21 to fruition, and that will be our reality forever and ever. God with us, with no sin, no brokenness in between. Only perfect fellowship with God and man for all eternity. And we can trust that because the one who said it is trustworthy and true. So this Christmas, be thankful for these two names, Jesus and Emmanuel. Father, we thank you for your word. God, I pray for every heart in here this Christmas. I know there's a lot of different emotions, a lot of different things going on. Pray these two names can encourage believers. I pray that you can um, just build their faith in you. At the same time, God, I pray that these two beautiful names will stir up the hearts of those who are far from you and that they'll realize how desperately they need these two things, these two names, Jesus and Emmanuel. God, I pray you draw people to yourself through your word tonight. In your name, amen.